Good afternoon. Hear me in the back? That's good. Okay. I've got Daria in the back for crowd control, so if you think this is going to turn into a Trump rally. <laughs> we have uh, a lot of information to go through this afternoon, uh, and uh, like is the case usually, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to get up there and give a, a brief overview of 2015 and 2016, and then we'll get into dialogue and questions or any feedback or thoughts that you have on your mind. Uh, and as usual, it just grew and grew and grew. So we, have a, we do have a lot of information to go through uh, this afternoon, but I think it'll be informative for you. Uh, essentially, what we're going to do is 2015, we'll put a bow on it. We'll talk about uh, what went right, what didn't go right, uh, and overall results. We'll talk about 2016 and what we're expecting in terms of a forecast, what our budget is, and what we're seeing happening. 2016 objectives, uh, just a couple of different highlights that I want to point out to you. We're going to give you an update on our strategy, our overall strategy. We've talked to you about that before, but where are we, where aren't we? Marketing, I know you're all interested in marketing. 2015 was a big year for us in terms of marketing, so I want to give you an update on why we did what we did, and then overall the results that we're having with marketing, and then we'll give it back to you for questions and feedback. As I told you, there's a lot of information to go through. I'm going to go slow in some areas and quick in other areas, but I'm going to give you a lot to think about. Okay, So two different caveats. Be thinking of questions and feedback as we go through, so you'll have plenty of time for two-way dialogue at the end of this. Number two, I'm not going to cover everything. So if you're sitting out there saying, boy, you didn't even mention what I did in 2015 or this major objective that we have in 2016, I can't cover everything. Okay, It doesn't necessarily mean that what I'm talking about today are the most important things. They're just highlighting specific areas that I think are going to make our dialogue at the end better. Okay? And then the last thing I say is that I gave a presentation last week that had 43 slides and I had seven minutes to do it, which was an average of 10 seconds a slide, and I accomplished it. So I am going to probably talk in some areas that are a little quick. Okay? <clears throat> Let's look at this first. I know that's going to hurt your eyes. It's called an eye chart. There's a lot of numbers on there. And I'm going to go through every single line very carefully. Okay? It's important that you understand what's growing, what's not, what happened in 2015, and where we're headed in 2016. So I'm going to go through each line. The category and the categories of business that drive the Oklahoma media company are in the far left, our total revenue. The first column is 2015 prior year variance. That means 2015 and our results up or down. Green is up. Green is good, red is down, okay, versus the year previous, 2014. The last column is 2016 budget or our forecast versus 2015 actual up or down, okay? Everybody got that? Let's start with newspaper. And I'll also tell you this, the percentage next to the category of business is the total that that category makes up of all of our revenue in the Oklahoma media company. So the first line, newspaper. Newspaper makes up 47% of the total revenue of the company. Everybody get that? And by newspaper, it's display advertising and preprints. So newspaper was down 12% last year from the year previously. 12%. Let me tell you what's driving that. Specifically, classified categories, recruitment was down 30% last year. Automotive was down in excess of that. Two very big categories of business for us but troubled categories of business for us. Okay? We are not unique here. This is specific to our industry. So I would also tell you that automotive had an exceptional year last year, and they cut their spending with us. We've got our work cut out with local automotive dealers. We've got other products that we'll talk about that we're selling them, but in terms of traditional newspaper, they are not buying as much as they used to, and you know they've been big customers of ours for a long time. Art and his team in advertising are focused on trying to grow these categories across our entire portfolio. The other category of business that started to show slippage last year for the first time in, it was preprints. Preprints, we were actually up in 2013 and up in 2014, both double digits. In 2015, we were down 12.2% in preprints. So, what does that mean? Is that the beginning of the end for preprints? Not necessarily. We still have a franchise that is focused on delivering pre-printed inserts in the newspaper. And there are many retailers that still see that as a viable marketing option because it works for them. 
But there's no question in 2015 we saw slippage there. What ended up happening is that major advertisers were cutting distribution, cutting frequency, cutting overall quantities, and that affected us. Again, it is not specific to us. In general, that's happening all over the industry. Okay? Those are the categories that specifically drove that performance in 2015. Digital was down 6.8%. It's the first time we've seen digital drop like that in several years, down 6.8%. So let me talk to you about digital, and that line, that digital, is what we might call traditional digital advertising. That's banners and impression-based advertising on News OK, that's sponsorships, that's pre-roll video, that's mobile, that's digital video screen, that's everything outside of big wing digital marketing services. All of our digital advertising revenue was down 6.8%. Incidentally, it makes up 8.5% of our total revenues. It's a good portion of our total revenues. And it typically is growing. We need it to grow, and it will grow again next year. What's driving that? Well, a couple of things. Number one, we have been focused for years on volume. Volume on News OK, which means every year our page views were growing, our number of um, Unique Visitors was growing, and we are selling a high percentage of the available advertising inventory. Okay? Last year, our page views actually declined. And what's ended up happening is that there is so much inventory out on the market that it's not a volume-based game anymore. It's really value-based. So what ends up happening with all of this infinite amount of inventory and traffic out there, while people are focused on Kardashians and cat videos, is that it's become commodity pricing. So CPMs have really dropped. Ad exchanges have exacerbated the problem. And as a result, our impression-based advertising dropped in 2015 versus 2014 for the first time in a while. We expect to turn that around in 2016, and I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. Direct mail was essentially flat, up slightly. The good news about direct mail is their profit increased significantly, and I'm going to come back to that in just a few minutes. And direct mail makes up 4.5% of our total revenue. Big Wing, which represents 5% of our total revenue, was up 3.6%. Just a minute about Big Wing, and I'll come back to this in a few minutes when I talk specifically about Big Wing. Five years we've been around and doing digital marketing services. Typically, we have grown in excess of 30%. Last year, we only grew 3.6%, and frankly, it's because we lost two major automotive advertisers in the beginning of the year. If you were to take those two advertisers out, our run rate was, again, significantly above 30%. We plan on getting back on track, and actually, 2016 is a big year with high expectations for us in Big Wing. I'll come back to that. Circulation, which makes up 32% of the total revenue of the company. 32%, not just print subscriptions, but digital subscriptions, all subscription revenue, 32%. Was down 6.8%. That was primarily volume driven. Our daily circulation volume was down 5.5% last year. Our Sunday was down 8.5%. That's better than some, worse than others. Typically, with newspaper circulation, both digital and print, what we're seeing across the country is that the small community properties are doing better. The larger metro properties are doing worse. We fall somewhere in the middle. Okay? Right now, our daily circulation is just over 100,000. Our Sunday is about 143,000. I'm going to talk to you about how in 2016 we're actually going to grow it again, and Eric and his team are already on track to do that. Printing services is uh, commercial printing, filling up our press capacity. As you know, we print USA Today, Edmund Life and Leisure, the Perkins Journal. We print Hispanic publications, Sooner Catholic, Christian Chronicle. The list goes on. We've done a tremendous job of expanding our portfolio of commercial printing. Makes up just 1.5% of the overall um, uh, revenue in our company, but it's highly profitable, and it grew last year. We expect that to grow modestly next year because, frankly, all the jobs out there in our marketplace that we really wanted, we already have. Okay? Total revenue down 8.5%. Our total expenses for the year were down 7.7%. Okay? You know what happens when revenue falls faster than expenses, your profit goes down. Our profit was down 19% last year. Here's the good news. We are a profitable company. Okay? But 
We have not turned the tide on our revenue challenges, and that's where our challenges lie primarily, is growing the top line across all of our products as an aggregate. The reason why our expenses were down 7.7% last year, you know, we started the year with a reduction in force. Not easy for any of us to accomplish or go through, but we started last year and it was forecast and planned, as well as our second largest expense, which across our entire company at this point is still newsprint paper. It's the second largest expense we have outside of all of us people. And we had significant rate concessions last year. Not only did we have no rate increases, they actually rolled our prices back from the mills. So we had significant savings in our second largest expense. We had a reduction in force. Those are primarily things that drove our expenses deemed down 7.7%. When you look at the 2016 forecast versus actual, we are still anticipating newspaper advertising revenue to decline. Incidentally, it's forecast that newspaper ad revenue will decline 5%. We have a forecast of down 6.8%. Does that mean we're worse than everybody? No, but it's based on some of the trends we saw last year continuing this year. Digital, we're going to turn around and grow 9.5% this year. You ta I talked about impression-based advertising. Okay? I'm going to switch to non-impression-based advertising, which is where we're going to grow in 2016 and beyond. And that's everything from mobile to video, the digital video screen that I already mentioned. Non-impression-based advertising as we focus more on the value of our audiences and not necessarily on commodity pricing that we can't keep up with. Direct mail. Uh, Tom and his team are launching a shared mail package, a shared mail package instead of a solo mail package piece that comes in your mailbox. You get a shared mail package right now that sometimes they come in a, in a clear plastic bag. Sometimes they come in an envelope like Valpac. Tom and his team and the advertising staff are focused on selling a shared mail package. That's going to move the number in addition to what the retention of some of our business from last year. We expect direct mail to grow modestly 6.6%. Total advertising, however, we expect to still decline because of some of the trends that we're up against. Big wing. I talked about big wing and this being a big year. We'll get back on track with that 30% plus growth rate. We've already had a very strong January and a very strong February. but We've got big goals in 2016 I'll come back to. Circulation, while it'll still be down in terms of revenue 2.2%, it will not be down as much as it was last year. The good news is that somewhere around the middle of the year, moving into third quarter, our numbers will actually cross. And uh, Eric and his team will actually show volume growth in our newspaper circulation in the second half of 2016 versus 2015. That's a very good thing, and it's a plan that they've put together through door-to-door, -to -door, our door-to-door -door crews, our kiosks, and our telemarketing or telesales teams. Printing services, I mentioned before, just be up slightly, slightly flat to last year, about 0.8%. So total revenue will be 0.7%. This is what we're anticipating when we put our plan together in the fourth quarter of last year. Expenses will be relatively flat. We do not have a reduction in force that's planned. We do not have a merit increase, the flip side of that, that's planned. So that's why, and we, and we will have rate increases on our second largest expense, which is newsprint, our newspaper. And we've already had a rate increase in January. They came back and gave us a rate increase in February as well. So those are some of the largest drivers in terms of wire expenses, and we're forecasting that it'll be essentially flat in 2016. When you've got flat expenses and you've got revenue slightly down, your profit goes down slightly again, which is down 6.6%. That's what our forecast looks like for 2016 and a recap of 2015. Okay? Let's talk about just some highlights for 2015. This is not news to anybody. We moved downtown. Uh, I wanted to reemphasize it to everyone because while it is tough for us to be away from our manufacturing and production colleagues that are still out on Britain Road, it is critically important to the overall brand and our company. By putting a stake in the heart of downtown, it has changed perceptions in our community of our company. Trust me, I hear it. I hope you hear it as well. We give lots of tours. We've been included on the mayor's state of the city. I saw a video that Todd passed out 
uh, uh, shared over the weekend uh, an MBA program for UCO downtown. They featured our building and our statues out front for things happening in downtown. We've won architectural awards. Who cares about all that stuff? It's important. And not only is it important externally, but internally. To be able to break down walls, literally, in between teams and in between departments has had a positive effect on our overall collaboration and productivity. And so it was incredibly important, this move. I can't thank everyone who went through it enough. Uh, but at the end of the day, we've now been down here for a year. And I say it's been essentially a game changer for our company. The digital video screen on the outside of our building, 24 by 42 foot uh, digital video screen, you know, we sold almost a half a million dollars of incremental revenue there. When Wayne and his team put a, a business plan together for this, uh, they had a, a longer payback plan uh, for a return on investment than this, than what we're actually going to realize because we sold more in our first year to 65 different advertisers. You know, we run a, uh, about a 50% content, 50% uh, advertising on an eight minute loop. Uh, and that has also gotten a lot of attention, not only from the community and from our downtown neighbors, but from advertisers. Uh, so incremental revenue here on digital video screen, we need that to grow in 2016 as well. The Oklahoma and Direct in 2015, I told you we were essentially flat uh, in terms of our revenue, but Tom, who's sitting over here, and Vinette and their teams did an incredible job managing expenses. And I can't stress enough, when you're in an environment where you are not growing, on the top line to the degree that you need to, one of the ways that you can improve your bottom line is by managing your expenses. And they did a terrific job in terms of streamlining and gaining more efficiencies on each one of our individual direct mail jobs on getting much more focused on a lean manufacturing operation. Did a terrific job managing that business. And as a result, our profit was up 45% last year. Big Wing Interactive, I told you before, we started, and you've seen the, the banner hopefully, five years ago. We started with two people. We have over 40 people now doing search engine optimization, doing web development, um, uh, uh, doing search engine marketing, social media management, uh, content marketing, which was a big uh, uh, growth area for us in 2015 as well. The game changer for us, and Marilyn, I, I hope you would agree, was some, some real recognition that we got on a national level last year, both from Moz.com, which is sort of everything SEO, uh, started out as a consulting uh, business, and now is a real go-to. Everyone turns to Moz.com in terms of SEO, really giving us some designation about doing it um, better than a lot of people and recommending us. Google, on the other side as well, also gave us some Great recognition as one of the top search firms doing it right. What's ended up happening now is in addition to um, our local footprint where we are really dominating in terms of other local agencies with our digital services, we're also expanding our portfolio of customers to national and in some points international. I think you have a customer in Mexico. Um, so this is really a great opportunity for us to expand our services and scale our business when we can fulfill those services here. Uh, so we expect Big Wing and our digital marketing services to grow at a higher trajectory in 2016 as well. So bestride.com, um, you may have seen this advertising. I talked to you about how automotive uh, has been a challenge for us. Uh, Best Ride we launched uh, in the fourth quarter of last year. Um, there's actually a Gatehouse Media, this is their product but we are branding it and selling it here in Oklahoma City. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to uh, put our marketing muscle behind a product and to reestablish a relationship with auto dealers through a product like Best Ride, which is a simple way to search used and new car inventory, and then to grow our business across more profitable lines like digital marketing services, newspaper, direct mail, et cetera. So, Look for us to continue to market and brand this product, and keep in mind that it is an opportunity for us to reestablish ourselves with local auto, auto dealers who aren't necessarily enamored with Autotrader and Cars.com, which are very expensive and don't necessarily work in terms of giving them the leads that they need to justify the investment that they're making, and we're giving them an alternative here. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, 
circulation in 2015. We went through a massive route restructure. <clears throat> and I won't bore you with all the details, but our circulation folks were consumed with this effort in 2015. And uh, uh, to, to put it in a few sentences, we had open routes because our delivery mechanism and the way that we actually had our carriers going out and delivering different routes had gotten so confusing over the years and so non-efficient. One carrier would go way up here to this geography and then way over here to this geography. And so we had to completely redo our routes and to minimize the number of open routes or down routes that we had. Uh, we had at one point, Eric helped me, 60 open routes, 70 open routes. That's not a good thing, take my word for it. We wanted to be down somewhere in the dozen or so and we were able to accomplish that with this re route restructuring. The other thing it did is it provided us the ability to improve our customer service. There's a metric in our business where if you're typically about two complaints per thousand, um, that's average, that's good. We were up at uh, six and a half to seven. So three plus times the amount of complaints that we had on our delivery than where we should have been. I'm really proud to say that after that re route restructure, after we made it through that, we minimized the number of open routes that we had, and we actually lowered our complaints per thousand to less than two. So we were at 1.8, we finished the year at about 1.9, which is fantastic. That customer service mantra, I would tell you, Eric and his team have done a terrific job carrying that through everything they do. It sounds cliche about world-class customer service, but everyone in this room is in the customer service business. All of us come in contact with our customers on a daily basis. Customers being our readers, customers being our advertising, digital customers. We come into contact with the community on a daily basis, and customer service is critical. They really focus their entire operation on it. One of the things that we did is this one-a-day call. Um, and we had 33, it started off with just the leadership team, then we expanded it to some other managers, and all of you are welcome to participate. We have 33 people at this point participating, and we call one subscriber a day, or five a week. Since we started this, we've called 4,000 subscribers. 4,000, who have probably never heard from us except for to sell them something when their subscription expires or to complain to us about a delivery issue or something else. We called 4,000 of them. With voicemail and other things, we got through to about half of them, so consider 2,000 subscribers. And all we said to our subscribers was, we called you for no other reason than to thank you for your business. Just to thank you for your business. Here's who I am, here's what I'm calling for. I simply called to thank you. And then, while I'm on the phone with you, is there anything we can do better to serve you? Okay? And I can tell you from making those phone calls myself, typically the people are blown away when they, return, when they receive that phone call. And I think as a company, we can learn a lot from that. Goodwill is difficult to spread. As you know, people complain more than they share a good experience, which is why we gotta work twice as hard to deliver exceptional customer service. And Circulation did a really good job leading the way there. Everybody likes awards. So I won't bore you with too many of them. We win a lot in news, but three I just wanted to point out to you. Ten newspapers that do it right from editor and publisher. Um, that's, not gonna, that's not going to grow our business at all, and at the end of the day, that doesn't mean that we're more profitable because we are, but it is a testament to some of the innovation that we're doing uh, and some of the th new things that we're testing. I would also tell you that, that seven-minute presentation that I had last week, we were named one of four finalists in a mega innovation award, a national award. We did not win it. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, others are recognizing some of the things that we're doing, um, and that's a good thing. Uh, at the end of the day, it does nothing for our company other than to say we need to continue to innovate. If we are not trying enough things and failing, then we're not trying hard enough. You've heard us say that before. And one of the things that we do here is we try a lot of different things. And we continue to get recognition for our sports team who's sitting over in the middle there. Um, terrific recognition for what we do. I think we do sports better than anybody. So 2016 objectives, I'm just going to point a, a few out to you, and then I want to give it back to you for um, some questions before we get into marketing. Pay for performance. You know, right now, um, when you talk about selling newspaper advertising, 
we have typically sold it the same way for 100 years, which is we, you pay us access to our audience by the inch. So it's a 10-inch ad, and we charge you by the inch. That's the old model, and that's the way we've done it for 100 years. We're not necessarily in the business at this point of giving you access to our audience. We're in the business of helping you sell things. So we are testing a pay for performance business model in advertising that instead of being paid by the size of that ad, we're paid a cost per phone call or a cost per sale or transaction. So it's really a pay for performance model. We're confident that our advertising is going to make your phone ring or you're going to actually sell something and that's how we're paid. Okay? Uh, Dallas down the, uh, down the road from us has been doing this. They do about three and a half million dollars a year in pay for performance business. We just started it. We're focused on some non-traditional newspaper advertising categories like service categories um, and we're having some success. Wayne already, I think your group has sold six or seven contracts which is a good thing. Right, Sharon? We can do more. Good. Three additional sold, six already started, so we're up to nine. We'll be able to do more. Non-impression, I won't spend a lot of time here because I think we've already talked about it, but the non-impression based business in terms of digital, you saw we have a nine and a half percent growth rate that we're focused on in 2016, and this is how we're going to do it. Oklahoma and Direct, I already mentioned the shared mail package. Uh, that's where we're going to get our growth in 2016. Big wing, we have big growth, back to 30% plus uh, uh, goals in 2016, uh, and we're confident that we'll be able to do that. Some really good things happening, um, not, to, not the least of which is some of the designation that I shared with you already. I told you our points are going to intersect in terms of our newspaper circulation in 2016. Uh, and we've got a goal to bring in 12,000 new subscribers with a lot of start pressure associated with that. And that's going to happen in 2016. Events. Little teeny word on a big slide here. Events is one of those areas that I think we can do more in. Uh, and uh, by events, uh, when you think of the Bart and Nadia, uh, the health fair and the expo that we just recently did, that's a lot of work for some of us in this room. But who better to do a local event than us, who has the ability to self-promote, the ability to advertise across all of our platforms and market the event, and the, uh, the ability to aggregate audiences. I think there's more we can do with events. In fact, I've got a couple ideas already. Um, one for a sports event, high school sports event. Uh, then other people that look like us, media companies around the country, are having some real success here. So I'm just going to put that up there as something for you to chew on in 2016. I think we can show some growth there. HDMI streaming. Who here watches Netflix? Raise your hand high. Who here uses uh, Amazon Plus? Keep your hands held up. Amazon Plus or Hulu? Any other? Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. You won't get tired. How about who has a, a Roku device or watches uh, television through a game device? Um, uses a DVR. How about that? Okay. Um, I, would, I would tell you that this is a real growing area. Okay, you can put your hand down. Put your hand down. <clears throat> By the way, if you watch Netflix and you've got teenagers, I think they have my password and I'd like it back. <laughs> Everybody seems to be watching TV differently than they used to, which is why the local broadcast model is changing so much. In 2016, television political advertising will be up you're all sitting down, $19 billion. $19 billion. Well, here's the thing. Most local broadcasters aren't focused on HDMI streaming. And that's where the audience is moving. It's just a matter of time, folks. Okay? It's the newspaper business 10 years ago. It is moving. So we wanted to have a first-to-market presence on Roku, uh, which we have over 2,000 downloads now since we launched it in December. Uh, Apple TV uh, coming soon, Amazon Fire, uh, Google Chromecast. Uh, so uh, Alan Hertzberger and his team, along with David Morris, have done a really good job to get us here. Why? What's the economic model? Haven't figured it out yet. Okay? But we know the audience is moving there, and it's something that I want you all to watch in 2016. Subscriber value and engagement. Something that we're going to continue to focus on in 2016. Um, Oklahoman.com, 
we focused on embargoing more content this year, so holding back exclusive content on Oklahoman.com rather than just putting it out on a free or advertising supported site like News OK immediately. We roll that content out on News OK after a certain period of time, but it increases the value to our subscribers. Uh, you'll see us do more of that. Community forums is something that Kelly and her team are focused on. Steve's done a good job with it. Jacqueline's done a good job with it. Clyde and her team can do more of these sort of small events where we get, the, we, we get our community to participate around a topic. These are some topics that we're really focused on in 2016. Mental health and addiction, we will continue our coverage there. Education and the skills gap that we have right now because of our education. Criminal justice reform that has been obviously a big topic that will continue to grow and population growth in our infrastructure. Strategy, very quickly, we have identified three specific audiences as it relates to our strategy. One is print loyalists, or folks that are still want the newspaper primarily. The second, or what we might call print natives. The second is uh, digital loyalists, or digital natives, meaning they're 100% digital already. And the middle group, the third group, uh, is digital immigrants or what we call our blend group. We have cross-functional teams working on each three of these audiences, uh, and it's where a lot of our innovation comes from. We don't have the luxury of letting up the gas pedal on one of these audiences while we focused on a 100% digital audience. We have to make sure that we produce the best newspapers we can, 42% of our revenue, while we continue to innovate on other platforms, which is why we've got these three cross-functional teams working as an extension of our strategy in 2016. Marketing, we spent a lot of time and effort on marketing last year. I shared with you um, all of the marketing campaign. A lot of you were there at those meetings. We talked about the brand health measures, where we were and where we weren't, and the difficulty of some of the focus groups and the feedback we got from them. You remember that we scored very low on all these categories, top of mind awareness, unaided awareness, saying name your news sources. I think we only had 42% or so that named the Oklahoman or any of our products as one of their news sources. So unaided awareness was very low. Our favorability among prospects or people that weren't our core customers was very low. Purchase consideration also very low. The good news is that each one of those, when we went back into the, uh, into the field in July and then in December, the needle is moving from the marketing that we're doing showing positive and favorable improvement in all those brand health measures. We ended up with five new integrated campaigns that you saw from our sports campaign uh, to our branding campaign. We created 27 TV spots of, out of our marketing um, department, which was a lot of work, um, but um, it really paid off in the, in the long run. We, re we aired 7,000 times 100 million total media impressions across our entire marketing campaign. Folks, this is a big marketing campaign. We attracted nearly 500,000 people to OklahomaUnfolded.com, which is how we tagged all of our marketing. We got a half a million people to come to Oklahoma and spend three and a half minutes when our videos were only 15 seconds. So we had a lot of people go through a lot of information on this website and move their way to our subscriber portal. We also produced many leads. For advertising, we're going to do a better job in 2016 providing leads for Oklahoma and Direct and Big Wing as well. This is how many people worked through a subscriber portal to actually subscribe to our products from Oklahoma Unfolded from our marketing. And we won some awards there too, international awards, which is always good. It makes you feel good. In 2016, we're going to build off of that. A lot of words there, but we're going to continue optimizing our brand campaign. We're going to try to convert more to our websites. We're going to support circulation and subscriber growth. We're going to grow leads across the Oklahoma Direct and Big Wing and advertising. And we're going to refine and implement a new corporate social media strategy. We have social media right now. It's a little like herding cats. We're going to do a better job of really developing a social media strategy for Oklahoma as well as News OK. I'd leave you with this before I turn it over to uh, questions and feedback. Uh, and if I can't answer your question, trust me, I'll call on Scott or someone else that can. But 
We talk a lot about our purpose, helping the state be a better place to live, work, and raise a family. I'm going to put this in front of you every time we meet because it's that important. What we do in terms of making a difference in this community is critically important. Yeah, we want to be profitable. Yeah, it's important to be a business here and a viable one moving forward. But this purpose is what brings it together, and it's important that we continue to remember how critically important it is. As a result, our culture, and a lot of people say culture eats strategy for breakfast, so our culture is critically important. And we have four tenets that we focus on. You see them in your performance evaluations, and hopefully your managers and you talk and think about these regularly. Number one, attention to detail, accuracy. We talk about that in news, we talk about that in finance and accounting, we talk about it in advertising. Accuracy and attention to detail is critically important. Number two is customer focus. I've talked to you a lot about today customer focus and customer experience and exceptional customer experience. Folks, if we don't provide exceptional customer service, we're going to lose our customers. Without customers, you don't have a business. Third is continuous improvement. It used to be if you were standing still, you were moving backwards. If you're moving just a little bit now, you're moving backwards even faster. The pace of change in our industry and the world is incredibly fast. You all feel it and see it in your own personal lives. We have got to be focused on continuous innovation and continuous improvement as a company. And then fourth, collaboration. And I started this conversation talking about our new facilities. But collaboration isn't just a matter of facilities, it's a mindset. Okay? We are all on the same team. We are all focused on one thing, which is making sure that this, is company, this company is successful in the future, and we must do that through collaboration and teamwork. Okay, that was a lot. So, I gave you a lot to think about. Talked about 2015, 2016, talked a little bit about the industry. Now I'm gonna give you the time to ask us any questions. Our CEO, Gary Pearson, is here. Uh, myself, our leadership team, or anyone else. So what's on your mind? What concerns? What questions do you have? Yes? How are we managing the downturn in the oil industry? Isn't that kind of affecting yeah. our advertising? Yeah, it is. She said, how are we managing the downturn in the oil uh, industry? Uh, I'm not sure we're managing it yet, to be honest with you. Uh, the forecast that you saw me put up here for 2016 was based on the budget that we put together for our board and presented in the fourth quarter. A lot has changed since then. Our colleagues around the, uh, around the city are laying people off, uh, and there is a ripple effect that everyone is starting to feel right now, from consumer confidence to people scaling back. We're starting to see it in the housing market. Um, you're starting to see it across a lot of different areas. So I would tell you 2016 is going to be a challenging year. We thought we had a good plan. But as I told you before, continuous improvement, you have to be flexible, and I'm not sure we've seen the worst of it yet. Uh, it's, it's a scary time right now. Uh, I've, I told somebody the other day that it feels a little like 2008 uh, in terms of how the year is starting, and our folks in advertising that are nodding some heads will tell you they're hearing it from our customers right now. People are tightening their belt and are concerned. So we have to watch that very, very carefully, and we have to adapt to that with our business as conditions change. So I'm not sure we've seen the peak of it yet, but we're starting to feel it right now, and so are all of you. Anybody want to add anything to that? Yeah, I'll just add uh, that uh, in hearing the feedback from uh, small, uh, small businesses, uh, Tom Hyde and I, you know, we're on top of it. We had lunch today uh, with Monica Bartman of MSG, uh, and Charles, I'll get you up to speed on that. Uh, but just out the gate, understanding what the small business is going through and the impact that we saw it start happening to us uh, a few weeks ago, uh, we're looking at a, a new SMB uh, focus and package uh, to enhance the already current four initiatives that's focusing on identifying and reactivating former customers and identifying new customers. Uh, to, become, uh, to become customers of the uh, Oklahoma Media Company. So that lunch with this afternoon, they're coming back with some uh, data as well as some uh, suggestions and recommendations to meet with ourselves and then some of the folks in marketing uh, next Monday morning at 10 a.m. I would tell you that uh, the Oklahoma Media Company in general has, has been built on the backs of some major advertisers. Uh, you know, that old 80-20 rule. Uh, we had, uh, for a long time, 80% of our revenue came from 20% of our customers. 
but bigger advertisers, the bigger you are, the, the more difficult you're have it, uh, time you're having, and sometimes the more they're cutting in terms of their overall uh, marketing and advertising spend. And small businesses are really going to be a focus of ours moving forward. Who else? Chris, uh, you talk about customer service being item one for all of us, and I agree. Uh, this was mentioned at one of our meetings in the old building, so it's been at least a year ago. The question was asked, is there a way to change the, the bylines on our stories from instead of uh, Chris Reen at Oklahoma.com to your phone number, just your desk number? Uh, and, and I, I mentioned it for this reason, and I mentioned it at that time. You know, Barry Trammell, who's the biggest star in the building, has his cell number listed at the bottom of his column. Now, Barry Trammell, and I mean this, if he can do that, then each of us who's a reporter can have our desk number at least as part of our byline to make it easier for people to call us. I get calls all the time because my number is in the paper, and that's fine. And I get the same thing. Oh, thank God I got a human being to talk to. I can't get anyone to answer the phone. So it's just, I'll throw that out there as a suggestion. Maybe it's impossible to rejigger those bylines, but maybe there's a way also that we can revisit how we, what numbers we put in the paper and how effective they are. What do you think of that idea? I, I know in sports we get a lot of calls from people that say, you run the sports department number on the front of the sports page every day. It's the one number I know I can call and actually get a person. And sometimes they need they need a paper delivered or they, they need to pay their bill, but they know they can get a person. So I second what Owen says. That's exactly what happened. Kelly, what do you think of that? I think it's worth talking about, but I also think we need to restore some of the information in the paper that we used to have on page two that had more contact information. I mean, I put my number back on there uh, because I used to be on there. And I do think my call volume dropped after we took those out. So. Let me tell you something I know. I get nasty letters. <laughs> Woo. I get nasty emails, right, Gary? We get them, Gary said to me, only Monday through Friday this morning. Um, I get nasty phone calls. And I, I don't always do it, but I try to, I try to call every single person. Um, and so, you know, I would say if I can, you can. And more times than not, a high percentage of the time, it changes their demeanor immediately. When I tell them who I am and that I'm returning their phone call, they are typically blown away. That's not, that's, I'm not uh, exaggerating that. They're blown away that I would pick up the phone, call, the phone and call them back and have a conversation with them. And more times than not, they're usually in a much better mood and feel differently about us at the end of it. So I, I do that purposefully. In the world that we live in, it's full of vitriol at this point, and everybody can hide behind their keyboards and say nasty things. Um, and they don't expect, probably, Owen, for somebody to pick up that phone and have a live conversation with them. I think it's critical to our future. So I, I, would, I would consider doing that. Kelly, why don't you talk to your folks about it? And everybody else this isn't just, you know, people whose names are in the paper. I mean, this is across the company. I expect when somebody calls in, no matter what division you're in, that you are focused on customer service. If you can't solve that person, that problem, or that issue for that person, then find somebody. Don't transfer it or not deliver the message. Find somebody who can. It's really important. Thanks, Owen. Who else? Chris, how do you pick up for this political advertising? You know, um, we're never going to be able to get what TV gets uh, at this time. I think in the future, as TV and the audience continues to wane and it changes from typical low pro, uh, local broadcast and national model to some of these HDM uh, streaming devices, that the, the, the playing field is going to get a little bit more level um, and we'll be able to pick up more digital advertising uh, across some of the products that we currently sell. Having said that, Wayne uh, and his team are really focused on political this year. And Mike Day, who's here, Mike's already had a, some, some really good success uh, with some political advertising, right, Mike? It's not television, but, it, but, it's, uh, but it's some success. So I think um, you're going to actually see some, some relatively good business for us this year in, in election and political uh, advertising. But it's, it's just so hard 
to fall back on these political consultants right now that spend an enormous amount of money on, on broadcast and on television. Um, until that changes, and it's a sea change, it's much, it's much like classified categories used to be for us. We thought we owned those categories, and all of a sudden we woke up one day and we didn't. Uh, and many other media are getting a lot of the dollars that we were getting. That's going to happen with political. It's going to happen. But uh, Wayne has put together a great political package this year with, uh, with Charles's help. They've put together some great marketing materials. Um, and I'm feeling better for our, in terms of our opportunity to tap into some of these political dollars than we have in a long time. Uh, having said that, you know, the local, I just, uh, was it you, Kelly, who sent me something about KWTV? KWTV extending uh, their, uh, their local news an hour because they have so many commercials that they're going to run. So right now they're just, they're stacking money. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Um, but there may be some advertisers that are preempted. We may be able to pick up some of those morsels as they're pushing advertisers out of broadcast because they're taking election dollars. There's lots of ways to look at this. But when you're in Greenville, South Carolina, and Marco Rubio is paying $40,000 for a 30-second spot, I don't know what else to say. Anybody got any ideas? So, uh, Andy and my team have been working mainly on just the Washington Examiner and stuff, and yeah. we just signed up. Like Andy and our team, we've been working on just the website, and we signed up like weekly standard this year. So, is that part of the revenue, or is it because it's Anschutz Corporation? Well, I think I, I, I think the short answer is because they're Anschutz uh, properties. So, uh, and audience development, you know, we, we developed our own content management solution. Uh, we, we call it Ditto Publishing. Makes it easy to publish across all the platforms that we, uh, that we publish. Um, and so we were able to roll that technology out to some of our sister companies. So the Colorado Springs Gazette, and the Weekly Standard, the Washington Examiner, who are, all, are using that technology, and it's a revenue source for us. They're paying us for that. Um, so that's good. Can we expand that beyond that? Well, you know, we've, we've done some things with PPI uh, and making a strategic partnership with them. Uh, so they're right now, instead of it being a, an economic model where they're paying us if they bring a customer on, they're discounting what we're paying them, which is fine. Um, so uh, whether or not we can roll that out to the rest of the industry, I don't know. Um, but it's a good solution for us. It's a good solution for our, some of our sister properties, and it's a moneymaker for us. Who else? Where are the tough questions? Yeah. Just mainly, probably out of curiosity, do you have any numbers on uh, comparing Go codes versus their predecessor QR codes? Excellent question. Kelly or Alan, can I pick on you to answer that? I can try to answer that question, but the, uh, the actual, I have to look up the numbers, frankly, Caleb, as far as comparing Q, we know the usage of Go codes at the beginning was higher than the QR code. That's why we went away from the QR codes. Go codes are easier to use with uh, four letters rather than trying to teach everyone the technology of QR code. We saw QR code technology not growing across, um, you know, really not growing across our industry. We didn't see the usage go up. We tried a different way to get our subscribers into our premium digital products. So we'll try a lot of different things. We probably need to look at those numbers more closely again. Bottom line is, part of our digital strategy ongoing is to continue to get subscribers to engage with a premium product in the digital space, including Oklahoma.com, the apps, uh, uh, the print replica, all those products. Um, so the go code, as far as hard numbers, I can't tell you. We saw originally that number increase, but we didn't even revisit that. Let me tell you why that engagement is, is important. Those of us that have been around the industry for a while remember the ABC, ABC Auto Bureau of Circulations. Uh, now it's called AAM. Um, and um, Eric and his folks have been uh, working on how we can count audience measures that we haven't been taking advantage of in the past that AAM allows. Let me explain. Right now, if you're a subscriber, and I'll see if I butcher this, Ashley. If you're a subscriber, but you buy a single copy of the newspaper, we count you twice. Okay? But if you're a subscriber to the newspaper and you have full access to all of our apps and the Oklahoman.com and Digital Replica and other things on your iPad, we only count you once. We can count you multiple times. So if you are engaging in a printed product, 
but then you are traveling and you are looking at the replica uh, or you're regularly on Oklahoman.com, we can measure that engagement and actually get more credit for it in terms of our overall audience. We haven't been doing that. And we are going to start doing that in 2016. Okay, so that engagement from Go Codes and other things to be able to get our subscribers to move across platforms and utilize all the products that we create are really important. Not only for retention and value purposes, but also because we're trying to count that audience. One, one thing I'll add to that, just think of it in the terms of this. If you're a Wednesday and Sunday subscriber, every yeah, time you can print our audit, and something happens to Marco Rubio's plane on Thursday, you're going to go to probably one of our products digitally because you don't get a print product in your driveway. Right now, we wouldn't count that unless you decided, you know, I'm going to get the paper clipper at my house on Wednesday and Sunday. I'll drive to 7-Eleven and purchase a copy, and then we can count you. We need to count you when you go on to the <coughs> devices and look at our products there. Starting second quarter this year, with a lot of work that Ashley's done, we will start counting that. That's a better way to explain it. I knew you'd do it better than I did. <laughs> Who else? Yes. Uh, question on the digital streaming media. Do we currently have a plan to roll, like how we will, what kinds of content we will add, <coughs> what volumes of the various different kinds of content we will add? James or Alan, you want to take that? Uh, right now, the content we have is what we are producing every day in the studio. Right. And we feel, at least for the start, that. This is this is the kind of this platform is what this video was meant for. When we, we had the vision to build this studio in 2007, 2000, yes, 2007, and we built a bigger one in 2008. And all the kind of interviews we do in that studio, um, you know, we present those all throughout our articles. We present them on our mobile devices and our apps, but it's really meant for the screen in, in your home. And so. Uh, we're anticipating that the videos that we're doing every day, filling that studio up with newsmakers, long-form interviews, um, that kind of storytelling is, is really where we're starting this year. As far as unique programming, daily news updates, we don't have any immediate updates for that. We've talked about that. <coughs> Kelly and Dave, we've been part of those discussions. But we haven't, uh, we haven't started anything yet. I think we're scraping the surface. And remember, we're playing disruptor here. We're playing disruptor, which is fun. Because uh, we're not always in that position. How many, I'll put, David, I'll put you on the spot. You know how, any, how many video views we had last year? Any idea? Eight or nine million video views. We're selling pre-roll to that and sponsorships and other things. Here's an here's a interesting statistic. Calkins Media, which has uh, sites all over the country. Philadelphia is one of them. They're a year ahead of us in terms of HDMI stream, streaming. A year ahead of us, 70% of their total video views now come through HDMI streaming in one year, 70%. So I think we're scraping the surface, but that's where the audience is moving as well. Yeah. You're not going to role play with me, are you, Clayton? <laughs> Just because I don't have a headset like you do. <laughs> uh, so. So being the, the target audience, I've never had a uh, paid television subscription. I don't really uh, consume any broadcast media at all. Uh, all the media that comes into my home is through, um, through a Roku device. Uh, I'm also a subscriber to the Oklahoman, but I wasn't aware that there was a Roku app for the Oklahoman yet. So I'm, I'm curious if there's going to be a big marketing uh, push for that app in the yeah, 16 I think one of the things we want to do is get there first and make sure that we were ready and it was uh, appropriate. Um, I can tell you the Apple TV has been a slow adoption. One of the things that we do with our Thunder sponsorship is we do this headline hustle game. Uh, hopefully you guys have been to a game, you've seen it. Uh, and we've been giving away an iPad with a full access subscription. Uh, we're actually converting that now to give away an Apple TV because we want 18,000 people to say, what the hell is the Oklahoma giving an Apple TV away for? Um, so we're doing things like that, but Charles, can you talk a little bit about what we might do to promote Roku and HDMI in general? Yeah, I mean, currently we have sort of a two-step plan for it. So step one is to go out um, and get some big news, um, and it's one of those things beyond the benefits to the consumer. It says a lot of positive things about our company, just like Chris was talking about, winning innovation awards and being known in the industries and innovating. 
indicator. So step one for us, the quickest thing we can do to get to market is to tag all of our marketing communications uh, with a message that announces that that we're offering content on Roku, you know, streaming content on Roku and, and Apple TV. And we've already, already started to roll that out. It's pretty shown in, this, in the presentation. Last year alone, we had 100 million advertising impressions out there, so it's a quick, easy way to get a message out that we've got the service. We do have a plan, or we are working on a plan right now, to do a launch for, um, for our streaming product. <coughs> So that is something that uh, will be coming shortly. So Clayton, I'm curious, what would you do? Uh, to market the, the device? Yeah, I mean, just put it, just just market it uh, on Roku? Uh, well, I think you have a, I get an email every morning from the Oklahoma with uh, headlines. I think that would be the, the most obvious place to, to start. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. By the way, that email's working really well in terms of open rates uh, and other things. So. Uh, it's been a great way to start to promote some things. Let's let's make sure we do that. Who else? Yeah. This may sound. Hey, didn't you already ask a question? I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just looked at the Oklahoma app on my phone, and it's, this might sound overly picky, nitpicky, but it says it was last like updated in 2011, which is almost five years ago. We're, work, we're talking about all these new things, HDMI streaming, et cetera, but are we going to work to make sure that our current products are up to date? Excellent. Because honestly, I work here. I don't use the app very much because it's clunky. Yeah. Excellent question. Continuous improvement. I put it up right there. You know, at times, whether we put something on a shelf or we check a box and then we move on to the next shiny object, we can't do that. We've got to make sure that every single one of our products is as good as possible. So who on the leadership team is going to answer that? Uh, well, I don't know exactly what team I'm going to over and look at in a minute. I can assure you that hasn't been updated since 2011. Uh, I know we launched it in 2010, October, and I know we've had numerous updates. Uh, and I know we're working on an update that's going to come out, uh, I believe, in the next month or so. I'm seeing a nodding head from Levi out there. But I have to look and see what you're seeing. But okay. Is that promise. just iOS, though, that you're working on, or is it? Now we've updated all all those platforms. In fact, I don't even think we had Android. Are you using Android? Yes. I don't think we even had that in 2011. That'd be some fun. Yeah. Well, anyway, we'll we'll check that out. We need more people to break things for us. Yeah. <laughs> we can switch gears to the community aspect. You guys are more involved with leaders, more so the businesses and community. And I know there was a lot of conversation before we made the meeting downtown. How exciting. <coughs> Yeah, yeah. The question is that what sort of feedback have we gotten from our move? Um, you know, Gary, you might want to respond as well. But I would just say that it's been really positive. It's been positive. We we do a lot of tours everywhere we go. People say it's so great to have you guys downtown. Just anecdotally, I told you we won some architectural awards. We've we're included in promotional videos for the chamber and for other people. So I think people are proud of the fact that we're downtown, that pride that they take needs to resonate in our business more. But we get a lot of positive feedback from people. Um, and I hear from community leaders all the time. I give a lot of tours. You, and and, and I, I said this to another, we had, um, close your ears advertising. We had the folks from uh, Channel 4 in here um, uh, last week. Some of you may have seen Wes uh, Milburn walking around. Wes is a friend, maybe he's a frenemy. He's a friend of me. Uh, sorry. Anyway, he, uh, they're building a new building. And, and people will say that kind of stuff to us all the time. Hey, we're building something. Can we come and take a look at what you guys did and get some ideas? So we, you know, we're, we try to accommodate that. But I was telling that group that one of the best um, sources of feedback for me is that I see all of you bringing your family members through. I have seen more family members oh, Chris, this is my mom from out of town. Uh, this is my sister and her children. I've seen more of that in the last year than I saw in the 11 years previously in the tower. So I know you guys are proud of it as well. Who else? Yeah, I'm back. Virtual realities. Do we have any kind of plan about tapping into the audience <coughs> in our world? Huge buzz right now. 
think there's a big opportunity there, especially with the people from Ardmore and today, McDonald's and National Yard and something else. Yeah. Um, Virtual reality. I'm not smart enough to figure it out, but I know you guys in Big Wing are. Marilyn, do you want to address that? Yeah, actually, we've, uh, we've looked at it. We've brought it to the leadership team, and, and we're all looking at what the regular possibilities are, um, the utilization for our local museums um, and the larger entities. We've all discussed those topics. So we've, we've been talking about it. I know virtual reality seems like cyborg stuff to most people. But here's the reality. In the last decade, advertising is down $56 billion. And by advertising, that's TV, radio, newspaper, uh, direct mail, yellow pages, outdoor, traditional advertising. It's down $56 billion. Some of that was dropped to businesses' bottom lines. Some of that they are putting in many other places, like digital marketing services, like social, like virtual reality. Okay, this notion of being able to interact uh, and communicate right to your customers rather than paying some traditional media company to have access to our audience is changing. Somebody said the other day, the deer now own the guns. <laughs> so um, that's why these sorts of things, why you may say, oh gosh, what can we do with that? We have to watch that because th those types of things are, are, are where advertising and marketing dollars are going to be in the future. And we have to ask ourselves, can we or should we as a company be in it? What else? Yes. Um, I'm aware that we're getting ready to launch an um, initiative to attract digital subscribers at a low entry price. And I know that there's a balance in keeping the print subscriber and or migrating them to digital. Where, where's the company's philosophy on going full out on digital subscribers? I draw you back to our strategy, okay? We have a print native audience, we have a, a, a digital native, uh, and we have a digital adopter. Uh, and when we drew this on a board, I would tell you the arrow really goes one way. It goes from print to blend to digital, and that's where the audience is going. So while we want to be focused on producing the best high-quality newspapers we possibly can, we know that there are people out there that don't want the newspaper. Okay, and the way that we've priced it right now um, is probably not as competitive as we can be. So we're not as concerned about people who are our print loyalists abandoning print because they can get a full digital experience at a more cost-effective rate. We think we're going to pick up more digital subscribers that aren't going to read the newspaper anyway. That's probably the quick way to answer it. Ashley or Eric, do you want to jump in there? Uh, I, I just is not ever going to be to cannibalize print in any way. Our targeted market is folks, our first initiative is to go after folks that used to be subscribers of the Oklahoman that now fall outside of our circulation print, footprint. So these are people that love us, that want to engage in our products, and now we're offering them a better price and the ability to do it. So I see us growing our audience. We're not, our focus is not on converting anyone to be one way or the other, um, but to, I, I think you made a great point when you said there are some people that only want to consume our products digitally, and, and so this is our way of making that available to them, but not, not in any way are we trying to retract from the print product. Good point. And remember, we used to be a statewide distributed newspaper in all 77 counties, and we're not. We retracted that significantly. And then we have some single copy areas where people can drive to get that newspaper. But there's still a lot of people, and I hear from them all the time. They write me letters and emails and other things that say, I can't get your product unless I get it through the U.S. Postal Service. And then it's two days late or three days late. Um, and those types of folks could be digital-only subscribers. The other point I will add to that is when you look at most newspapers around the country, we were kind of price uh, one per job, as we would say, in Texas, where our digital-only price was higher than our, our print and digital price. So we're going to reverse that. Uh, the good thing is like a dog in a car. We're going to mash the pedal a little harder here starting here pretty soon and see if we can get people that are not print subscribers who are not going to be print subscribers to become a digital-only subscriber. So that's growing numbers for Wayne and all of our folks in advertising. If we start to see any migration, any concern, we can easily lift our foot back off the throttle and go from 9.99 to 
1099 or something, we can kind of manage that. But if we haven't been aggressive, and we need to be a little bit more aggressive about rolling digital circulation than what we have in the past. This is not the only time you get to ask us questions because um, at the end of the day, we're serious about you can ask us questions whenever about whatever. Uh, we have open door policies, and that's not just sophistry. Uh, but our CEO, Gary Pearson, is here. I'm here. Leadership team is here. What is on your mind in terms of challenges, questions, or concerns that you have? Who's got a hard question? Yes, Martha. I don't know that my question is hard, but um, in thinking about gen a generation like uh, my son, who's seven, I have a really hard time getting him to, to read or pay attention to anything he needs. Um, all he wants to do is find bloggers that blog, that blog about something or play video games or whatnot. So, Your seven-year-old's a blogger? <laughs> Is that what you just said? <laughs> okay, have a good afternoon. <laughs> what are the strategies that maybe we need to be thinking about to reach to those kinds of, that generation, to get them to move to being more concerned about society and news and things like that? Wow, I mean, Martha, that is a hard question because you just, you just hit probably the hardest thing. Uh, and whether it's a seven-year-old or a 37-year-old, apathy is something that as a society we're dealing with and it really affects a lot of our products. You know, um, apathy. What was the, um, the most recent example? Somebody give me the most recent example. I told you I used to talk about um, Gary, Gary Mars and the city council and how few people voted. Oh, Carrie Coppernell, where's Carrie? Carrie here? Carrie's in the back. Carrie just won a school board seat in Oklahoma City, right Carrie? <laughs> this has nothing to do with Carrie because she tells some really funny stories actually about going and banging door to door, right? And the, some of the crazy conversations you had with people, school board, huh? Okay, tell me how you feel about abortion. Yeah. So uh, tell me what you think about Obamacare, right? You know, but at the end of the day, she won. I'm going to get a little off. She won for a school board seat. Oh, by the way, we have a $1.3 billion deficit, and we're talking about cutting school funding another $400 million. She won with 283 votes. 283 votes. And the guy she was running against got like 240 something. Less than 600 people. <laughs> Less than 600, how many registered voters? And that's that apathy that we're dealing with. And it, whether you're 7, 27, 37, 47, I don't have the answer to it. But it, it, it is an absolute threat for what we do in many of our products. And by the way, Owen hosted an awesome debate, and we, you know, we, 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 we covered it pretty extensively, and less than 600 votes cast. Uh, last week, a group of them were called the Nice Scholars, and they, were, they came from all over Oklahoma, and they all got scholarships to come to the city, and there were about 35 of them, maybe 40. And they were all like, between the ages of like 20, 22, I think the oldest might have been 24, 26. And so I started talking to them about, new, you know, first I asked them the questions. How many of you all think newspapers are dying? You know, and they all raised their hands. I said, oh, well, let's think, let's talk a minute about what you're saying. And so then I asked the audience, I'll, I'll, I'll pick on some of you, I'll say, Ashley, do you have time to go to the state capitol every day for me and see what's going on out there? And, check to see what all the committees are meeting on and what bills are passed. Do you have time to do that for me? Okay. Sharon, okay. can you go down to the jail every day and see who's in the jail? Or can you check the records for me? Can you, uh, you know, do that every day? No. Okay. Uh, let's see who else am I going to pick on here. Melissa, could you uh, go to all the school board meetings for me? No, ma'am. All of them. <laughs> I would like for you to cover City Hall. I want you to find out everything that's going on over there and build sources so you know what's happening. Can you do that, Nancy? Do you have time? Well, that's what we do for you. 
that's what good journalism does for you. And when I explain that to groups, even when they're 22 years old with their head in their phone, they go, wow. It's weird because they've never thought of it. But sadly, it's not just groups I talk to at that age. I can have the same conversation at the Rotary Club, and they'll say, wow, I never thought of it that way. But you all, as ambassadors, you need to be spreading that. You tell us our marketing messages, we've tried to do that. It's beat journalism. No one else is going to do beat journalism. TV stations don't do it. Radio stations don't do it. We're it, folks. And that may be true, but let me have Ray on her parade. Oh, come on. <laughs> there there may be a reason why nobody wants to go to the Capitol or City Hall uh, or the jail uh, or a school board meeting. The question is, are people interested in that? And now we can have this debate all day about our importance on democracy and um, you know, what we are doing and other people aren't. At the end of the day, do we have an economic model because of it or are we doing it because no one else will do it and there's still things that we do because no one else does it. But that's what we're up against. That's what we're up against and that's a reality that we have to face as a company. Doesn't mean that we're gonna abandon all that. But it is a reality that we have to face. Because at the end of the day, Gary has talked about we have to be entertaining. We have to be entertaining. We're going to be a product. There's only so entertaining you can be with a capital beat and the cop beat and the other beats. It's important. I'm not saying that, folks. But you have got to keep in mind that society right now has voted. And unfortunately, many of them don't think it's important. So are we going to convince them it's important? We're going to continue to try. But it is an uphill battle. You want to debate me? Yeah, Oh, look at the time. <laughs> but the part I think that sometimes they don't understand is the watchdog we're playing those. They might not be interested in the mundane that goes on, and we don't want to write about that. But, but the question is, if we don't, if we don't watchdog, be a watchdog for the government, who will? And where will our democracy lead to? So it is incumbent upon us to find the interesting things that they are doing and to write about them and put them in the paper, but to also remind people at the same time of the role we're playing in democracy. Now, is that going to pay all the bills? Uh, I hope we can get support from a community that recognizes the need we, and the role we play. But it is, it's up to us to find ways to make it interesting. So it's not a debate, but... That's a good debate. And I'll, tell you, I'll tell you where it'll lead. It'll lead to Trump opening up libel laws and uh, trouncing on the First Amendment. Who else? Stand up, Charles. Kelly's talking about some of the approaches uh, and Chris too, the importance of the paper to democracy and things like that. Um, but getting back to your original question, um, a lot of we've done a lot of research in the marketing group um, to find ways to sell to parents, you know, through parents to kids. So bring <laughs> statistics that show that kids who read the newspaper score 30 percent better on achievement tests and things like that. So one approach is to remind people of the role they play in the community. Another approach can be guilting parents and subscribing for the kids. <laughs>
Have we looked at, uh, with our digital lab, going specifically in colleges, people who are kind of changing some of their lifestyle choices and pushing them to a college age group? Especially when you're talking about trying to recapture some of the stuff out in the state, places like Weatherford and Durant, where we used to sell a decent number of papers. We may be pushed, especially in the college environment, maybe getting people to digitally subscribe there. Uh, I think we could probably do a better job there. You know, we've, we've, uh, uh, we have relationships with OU and OSU uh, and other colleges around uh, the community, but have we specifically done a program for college-aged kids to be digital-only subscribers? No, and maybe we should. Yeah. But to add to that, my son is in the business, and they gave, the Wall Street Journal gave them all digital subscriptions. It'll, it'll end up on your bill as a parent. Trust me. Trust me. One thing that we do is we do work with a lot of colleges, and they do purchase access for their students. Um, and then also, you know, they have the opportunity to go to the university. And then also, you know, if you guys don't know, our newspapers and education program offers free access to every K through 12 teacher throughout the state of Oklahoma. And we're doing the best we can to tell them that we're out there and let them know that this exists. But I mean, if you've got a student, make sure their teacher knows that these resources are available to them because teachers too are a huge, <coughs> a huge advocate of the value of having incredible resources available. Um, but to that point, I have to let you know that OU well, has print. Uh, right now, all the universities pretty much in, in the state of Oklahoma subscribe to our archives product, so they're not using the paper today, but they'll use it to look at yesterday's edition. So I think what you're hitting on is something we probably should look at. Is there a way to kind of increase engagement with the products that we already have there in these universities now, be it the archives product, be it the digital replica, things like that? And I think some of this that we're already stepping into for the second quarter with digital subscriptions will probably play a role right into that, to your point. Good feedback. Folks, I'm going to end there. I'm going to say that um, uh, this discussion is a good one. Uh, it's, it's asking a lot of questions. It's challenging what we're doing and why. Uh, and it's uh, also offering feedback and suggestions. And at the end of the day, we don't have all the answers. I've been standing up in front of you for years saying I don't have the playbook and I don't have all the answers. Uh, collectively, I think we might. Uh, so just keep that in mind uh, that everyone here has an opinion, everyone here has a say, uh, and everyone needs to be part of the process. So I thank you for being here this afternoon. Thank you for what you're doing. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.